Hello. In this video sequence, I'm going to introduce the concept of molecular diffusion and Fick's law of diffusion that enables us to quantify its effect on transport. I'm also going to talk about the extension, relatively simple extension, to be honest, of Fick's law of diffusion to porous media, which is our interest. And so in order to uh, show this, I have here a simple slide that illustrates what molecular diffusion is. So you should be aware that every molecule, even if in bulk, so imagine some air that is stationary or some fluid in a beaker that is not on average moving, or indeed a fluid in its medium. The individual molecules, however, do have a random thermal motion. Okay, they're just jiggling around, essentially. That's called Brownian motion. And so what does that lead to? Well, imagine a case like uh, is illustrated here in this diagram is where we have a lot of molecules. Imagine there are salt dissolved in water or dye dissolved in water. A lot of molecules on the left. And there's some barrier, conceptually a barrier, um, so that there are fewer molecules on the right. And then if I were to remove that barrier, what would happen over time? Well, the individual molecules are just moving randomly. They don't have any, one would say, particular reason why they move to the right. But on average, what would happen eventually is that the concentration would be smeared out. You'd have a constant concentration everywhere. Here, okay? So eventually what happens is you have something that is uniform. So you remove the concentration gradient, or what I mean by concentration in this case, the number of particles people move. Okay, so but that leads to something interesting. Although the individual particles are moving around, there is in fact a net flux, a net movement of particles from left to right. And that's caused by the fact that there is a concentration gradient. And more particles here than here, if they move randomly, then on average, the particles actually are moving from left to right. So we have a flux of particles, a movement of particles from left to right, um, uh, that seems to be larger, the steeper this concentration gradient. So I've got a slightly better picture here, in fact, a video that I've taken from Wikipedia, and there's the, there's the reference. And so what this shows is an individual particle. So imagine a single particle, say, of salt that's dissolved in water. And it will move randomly. Okay, so it just jiggles around randomly. And in this particular case, there is a barrier that's been placed at about two-thirds of the way. So all the particles to the left side of the barrier. When the barrier is removed, the particles are now right side. Yeah. And so, as I said, there is a net flux of particles from left to right. What's shown at the bottom is the concentration, the average concentration. So it's showing the average number of particles per unit volume. Okay. So what you have originally is a high concentration and then a zero concentration. And then over time, that smears out. So we still have this net flux of particles. How do we describe that quantitatively? How do we describe it in an equation? And it's through Fick's law of diffusion. That was something that was first proposed and, and derived in 1855 by Adolf Fick. Um, it's very similar mathematically. In fact, it's identical mathematically to Darcy's law. So let's think about that. In Darcy's law, you have something that's forcing something, a pressure gradient, and that leads to a flux. And there are lots of other examples in physics where, where you see similar types of things. There's for instance, a potential gradient leads to an electrical current. Okay, so you have these two things. So you have a flux that's related to the gradient of something. And normally you find that the flux goes from high pressure to low pressure in Darcy's law. Okay, so you have a minus sign, the uh, Q, the volume of fluid per unit area per unit time, is proportional to the pressure gradient, but with a minus sign because it goes from high to low pressure. Exactly the same here with Fick's law. There is a flux of particles where you go from high concentration to low concentration. So it's proportional to the concentration gradient, but with a minus sign. So now let's look at this a little bit more carefully. There's the equation written there at the top. C is the concentration. Now there are many ways in which you can define concentration. Traditionally in chemistry, it is normally moles per litre. So it's essentially the number of particles per unit. For convenience in what follows, we will define it differently. It's not, not a big thing to define it differently, so don't necessarily get worried about it. But I'm going to define it as a mass, kilograms, per unit fluid volume. 
Now that distinction is going to be quite important when we consider a porous medium. It's not, say, a mass of salt per unit volume of the whole rock. It's only of the fluid within the rock. Okay, so bear that in mind. Kilograms per cubic meter. Kilograms per cubic meter, say, of water, not of rock. Okay. F is a flux. And uh, if you think about what a flux would be in this context, because we've defined concentration mass per unit volume, it's actually a mass per unit area per unit time. And it is a vector. So although I've only shown diffusion in one dimension, of course, there will be a concentration gradient and the flux will be along the concentration gradient. So it is in general a vector. And so what's left in between is this coefficient, the relationship between the flux and the gradient. And that's the molecular diffusion coefficient. And it's relatively straightforward to see, I'm not going to go through it, that its units are meters squared per second. And its typical mag magnitude for simple molecules dissolved in water is about 10 to the minus 9 meters per second. Now, for those of you who have read or seen previous uh, discussion from me on Darcy's law, you'll know that when I say, well, it has a unit, in this case, meters squared per second, that isn't just something that comes out of the equations and we can ignore, nor indeed can the magnitude be ignored. So those two things can be explained physically when you actually derive fixed law, which can be done relatively simply. I'm not going to do that in this segment, but I will later. And then it will emerge why, in fact, the rate at which you have diffusion is not a speed, but is in fact an area per unit time. And that governs the rate at which the fluids will mix. Then the last thing is, well, what happens in a porous medium? So in a porous medium, we have exactly the same phenomenon. We have the fluids, uh, we have the individual molecules moving at random. So we have molecular diffusion. Conventionally, and I emphasize this conventionally, we write down a fixed law this way with a porosity term. Um, that's because we view, obviously, the volume or the area into which the fluids can move is restricted by the frosting because of course it's not moving through solid. Okay, so we write it this way. So we have this extra porosity term. And now dm, the molecular diffusion coefficient, is in fact the effective value within the porous medium. And that may be different from what we see in bulk in the free fluid. So that is more or less all I wanted to say specifically about molecular diffusion. What we're going to do next, in the next video sequence, is include molecular diffusion, which is this random motion, plus Darcy's law, which is fluid flow. So what we see in combination is we have fluid is moving through the porous medium, and then things that are dissolved in the water, for instance, of course, are moving with the water, but they also have this random motion. So we combine both the fluid movement and molecular diffusion together. Okay, so I will finish there. Thank you very much.